Hey there, StarCraft fans! It's Falcon Paladin coming at ya with yet another edition of StarCraft Brood War Remastered! Today, for our Carbot cast, it's going to be a match between Last and Larva here on Circuit Breakers. Did cast a game between two of these or these two players on Fighting Spirit a little bit ago, but consider this a rematch. Bottom left-hand corner is the Teal Terran player. It is Last. And in the top left-hand corner, it is the Orange Zerg player, Larva. Yeah, Last versus Larva here. I love that Last goes by a Smurf name that is Gosu. It makes me so happy that he does it. It just speaks to how how much he believes in himself. And honestly, he's one of the best Terran players on Earth right now. Especially with Flash going away. I mean, Last might be the best Terran player on Earth. Oh man, that is probably hotly debated. Uh, let me know in the comments if you think Last is the best Terran player right now or not. And then Larva, fun guy, uh, pretty bad manner sometimes. But overall, pretty fantastic player capable of taking a game off of Flash at least a few years ago in a couple of the games that I've cast between those two players. So, should be a slugfest. Should be two players who are very, very good at the game. And yeah, just walling off at the ramp here on Circuit Breakers with his barracks. So barracks first play. And very much looks like it's going to be, I was going to say, a hatch first play out of Larva. But at the same time, it could also just be a 12 pool into a hatch. So what are we doing here? Okay, so that's hatch. Cool. So hatch first here, 12 hatch out of Larva. Pretty standard stuff. Not super greedy, but also not super able to deal with like a proxy barracks play either. So keep that in mind. Yeah, four-player map here, so really hard to find out where your opponent is. And at this point, just Sloverlord scouting, and that's about it, is Larva. SCVs, one going north, one going to the right. Trying to find out where the Zerg player is. Really knows that Larva is a fan of that four-pool, and that early, early action that can show up and ruin your day. But at this point, no, thankfully. Comes over, sees a hatch coming up at two minutes, and says, okay, that was not a pool first by any stretch of the imagination. Gonna get on in, see what's up, bringing this SCV home for further, you know, making things... Making things and harvesting. Scouting is not really what workers are for. So it turns out... Ooh, a bunker coming up. All right, man. That barracks first in sort of a proxy position kind of makes this awesome. Kind of makes it awesome here. But uh, that bunker not going to come up. Yeah, that bunker's canceled. A lot of lost mining time here for the drones. But overall, Larva should be totally, totally fine in this situation. There are two Marines, but Marines are actually pretty bad against drones because drones are faster than them and they hit pretty hard. Look at this man. He's trying to come around. He's going to take that SCV down, and he does. And then the sneak attack from the back side, focusing down one of the Marines. Good kiting happening right now. A lot of drones are dying while these lings are being produced, but a Marine down, that's huge. That's humongous, but a lot of dead drones. We're looking at a 14 to 8 discrepancy here, which is massive. Wow, I like that we have the worker count here, by the way. Thank you so much, whoever did that on the Blizzard team, because super useful. Okay, um, nine workers now for Larva. Meanwhile, continuing to make SCVs back home and not really losing many of them at all was last. Sure, the bunker pressure did not kill the Zerg player, but it hurt. It hurt him quite a bit here. He's still trying to drone up, still trying to reclaim that economy lead that he had from going for the hatch first to play. The good news is he kept his hatch. If he lost his hatch, that would be just absolutely disastrous, and I think he'd be dead. Ling's going... Uh, that's enough Ling's, maybe just around. Or just gonna run by, maybe. But how many Ling's do you want to sacrifice for a run by and a scout? There's really nothing to see here, anyway. Yeah, four Marines in that bunker is terrifying. Just get out, Ling's. Go. Skedaddle. Get on out. SCV coming in for scout number three of the day, and is gonna check for a lair timing. There's not one right now. Again... Larva is just trying to recover his economy as well as he can. He lost a ton of drones there. He's back up to 14, which is good. Which is really good. But what he wants to be doing is going for a lair. He wants to be going for mutalisks or lurkers or something. And being stuck on this Ling tech while he's trying to recover his economy hurts. Is that a lair? Mm, it's a third. Wait, wait, wait. What are we looking at here? Oh, a macro hatch at the top of the ramp. I was like, he's not expanding. Okay. Macro hatch top of the ramp. A marine's pushing out, saying, I can't allow you to just make drones for the next five minutes. So let's go ahead and force you to make some more zerglings. Maybe get us some static defense. Maybe supply block you as that happened. Ouch. 18 out of 10 available supply there from Larva. Oh, he's going to start. Oh, did he make another macro? Wait, wait, wait. That's a lair. Okay, so going for a lair looks very similar in the production tab, doesn't it? I argue that it does. 
So yeah, the Lings are trying to hold map control here. The Marine count is pretty high to the point that I think we're just going bio. There's no way this is going to be any kind of like a factory opening at all. Nope, that's another barracks. So yeah, we're looking at probably Marine Medic Science Vessel would be my guess here. Again, slowing down Larva to the point where Lurker Tech is really far away. Aspire is pretty far away too. The fact that we don't have a Hydralisk Den indicates we might not be going for Lurkers at all. But again, the timing could just be a little bit later. He doesn't need it. Need it. As last seems to be happy to macroing up, uh, just macro up himself. 24 to 18 workers. He's got a second base up. Two base to two base versus Zerg is a fantastic place to be. Stay there as long as you can, Terran players. Means you're in a pretty fantastic position. Working on Stim. A bit of a French thing going on today because I just watched The Boys. Is that Aspire? That's Aspire. Okay. Which is an Amazon original show based on a graphic novel from 2008 to 2012. And there's a character who is French. I'm not sure if he's Quebecois or if he's actually French. I think he might actually be French, but takes place in America. So he lives in America anyway. But, uh, Ling's running. They don't like this. Oh, maybe they like this engagement where all of them die in exchange for one Marine. No, guys, come on. They're trying to delay because that spire is really far away right now. Some creep colonies coming in to turn into Sunkins and try to defend against this attack. Uh, should be enough as long as there's a little bit of Ling support. There's a fire bat, guys. Guys, there's a fire bat. There you go. Get on out. Sunken one and sunken two. Marines darting on in around the sunken, getting behind the mineral line. Positioning good. Positioning really good. Drones actually keeping a bunch of those Marines in range of the sunkens and forcing their deaths. That was fantastic. And only three Marines make it back here with no medic support. Okay, so this is a lot better situation than it could have been. Pretty good response time here and reaction out of Larva. The Marines are super mega ultra lightning annoying. Are there any more things on the way? Yeah, you have to get the mining back on this base. I just feel like last is in such a good position. You can't be losing any more mining time, dude. Dude, fire the bats here. Factory now coming in. Now coming in at seven minutes, which is just late. Still no third base from Larva. Boy, howdy, man. Does he even have a, a drone over here? No, I mean, third base potential here. Third base potential up here. As again, a four player map, that's usually how this works, but he's going for a bit of a two base muta play. Uh, no, just kidding. He's going right to a queen's nest. Look at that. Yeah, going right for a queen's nest, which feels like hive tech to me, which means he wants defilers out fast. No muta harass, no time for that. It's being prepared for anyway, and actually being prepared for a little incorrectly, I gotta say. Okay, there are four mutas on the way now. Larva. Just waiting to make mutalisks until after the queen's nest is on its way. That's a lot of turrets for four to five mutalisks, man. That might be an overcommit on static defense, which does hurt. That's lost mining time, and those are lost resources you could be putting somewhere else, like towards more SCVs, for example. All right, so the mutas are hoofing on down here. I guess we're going to see a total of... What do we got? Uh, oh, that's not the button I wanted at all. It's got five there with four more on the way. Okay, so nine. Maybe with nine, four turrets is what you want. Last preparing better than I would have if I was him, so we'll call it good. Mutas. Thinking about darting in here, but turret, 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 bunker, marines. Doesn't seem potentially great at all. Dude, Larva's third base does not exist. I don't know what he's doing, even with how delayed he was in the early stages losing all those drones. I don't know why he's not taking a third at all at this point. It's 44 to 38 workers. Not many SCDs have died, and the turrets are just causing some problems for our mutalisks here. And look, I mean, he has map control. He's got lings everywhere. He's got overlords for vision. Really, I feel like he should take a third. He is! Okay, he snuck a drone over here. What is not paying attention? Interestingly enough, on the low ground, not on the high ground. But I guess he's not going... Oh, he's going lurker tech. Okay, so generally you'd expand up here, put a couple lurkers on this ramp, and call it good against a lot of bio. But um, he's not doing that. Taking on the low, gr low ground instead, which is more of a ZVP strategy. So I'm not sure why he's doing that. But a defiler mound coming in, which is again a game changer in ZV anything, is getting that defiler mound up. If you don't have a Defiler Mound coming on the way by 10 minutes, you're generally going to be in trouble. Eh, we'll say 12. Nidus Canal. <laughs> Morphing into 
I just love the Nidus Canal in Carbot is a giant blah face. It's just one of my favorite things in all of Carbot, and I like a lot of it. I haven't really commented much on the art style today, but I have had requests to do a little bit more Carbot, so we're listening to the peoples. It's what we're doing. What we like to do anyway. And a greater spire. Hot diggery do. Larva. Spiring it up, guys. Meanwhile, nothing too crazy down here from Terranville. Just a lot of marines. A fire bat. And a bunch of medics. Oh, and science vessels. Did I mention there were science vessels? Oh, that science vessel dying is such a big deal. That's detection. That is detection you're not going to have anymore when you run into lurkers. Oh, man. Wraith coming in, too. Wraith awaiting launch order. One of my favorite things to do. And actually seeing some vultures. So I don't think this is a total switch over into mech. This is just augmenting his bio with mech. With vultures, really, I gotta say. I don't, I don't see any tanks in the future here, but he is working on vehicle weapons, which indicates we're gonna see a decent amount of mech over time. Spider Mines finally being researched here, which seems a little bit late from last two, but he's up 53 to 39 workers. He hasn't really been taking a third base either. There it is. Okay, cool. Cement, uh, command center coming on in. Gonna land to the right side here. Not really worried about gas income because of his heavy, heavy vulture marine production, which does not require the gas. But yeah, kind of allowed this third base to get up, which... Fair enough. Is this injured? It is injured. Oh yeah, the vulture's got some shots on it. Okay. And the mutas cleaned them out. It really wasn't a big deal. Scourge in production to deal with the science vessels as you do. Army supply. Looks like it's actually favoring, based on the math here, boop, 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 carry the one. It's pretty even. Army supply is about even. Worker count is definitely higher for last, though, by she's like 18 or so. Again, doing addition on stream. Not great. Not while you're casting. Your brain is using all the parts of the, the brain for other stuff instead of math. Two Marines getting whittled down here. Ling's in the mix as well. And jump. Ooh, chomping a little bit on these SCVs. There you go. Taking down some of the SCV count, but it's some delayed muter harass. But the control by Larva is really good there. Liking that. And then you get some free vultures when you're coming up north anyway. Or you could just let them live for no reason. That's cool too. I'm fine with that. Do they not have speed? Huh. All right. Free vultures. Last not playing that particularly well either. Third base. Here and ready to rock Larva. 43 drones taking a fourth base behind this. But last continues to stay in an advantageous position relative to the Zerg pretty much consistently this entire game. Mutas have done a pretty great job here picking off units and not really losing many Mutas. I say as Wraiths come in and wreck their faces. Oh gosh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, generally anything kills Wraiths, Mutas included, unless the Mutas are already down around 10% health and then the Wraiths do fine. Okay, well Cloaked Wraiths cruising on in to this base where literally nothing can shoot up and there are no spores. I guess there's detection and there are Scourge, so we might be okay. Pretty good dodging, honestly. Wow. The Wraith dodging here by last is kind of super impressive. But yeah, the whole point is you can't just sit there and wipe drones off the map because the Scourge exists and they're dissuading you from doing that. Some Ling's heading down and just hanging out down here. I'm not sure what they're doing exactly. That's Command Center being built within spitting range of those Zerglings, but they do not see it because they do not see it. Ah! There you go. That's what I wanted. Meanwhile, we got more Mutas flying on in to Turret City down here in the natural. And there's a lot of green out. I mean, kind of like that last is holding the map at this stage. He is working on the upgrades. Got plus one attack for his bio. And plus one attack for his mech, too. But no armor upgrades for either one. None of them are on the way, either. So last, kind of skipping on upgrades a little bit. Trying to straddle the line between, you know, the back, the mech and the bio. And it's something we'll call back. Trying to roll on in with these Zerglings. The Zerglings who do have no upgrades whatsoever except for speed. Killing a couple SCVs. And then getting wiped out by vultures, because vultures exist to kill things like Zerglings and Zealots. Guess who's got some guardians? The happiest, smiliest guardians you've ever seen. Larva does. Yeah, he does. 135 to 114 supply. Last still has the lead here. Is he going mech? He's starting to produce these tanks, guy. 
I really think his bio upgrades would be better if he was planning on sticking with bio until the end of the game. So yeah, this is definitely a mech transition. Okay, so we can see how Larva handles this. How does Larva handle a mech transition? Because Zerg players struggle with this so mightily all the time on the channel. Split, split, a lot of SCVs going down there. There's the Irradiate, there is the Wraith. 70 to 64 workers. Last suddenly does not have a very massive advantage when it comes to overall worker count. So Guardian doing some good stuff, ends up getting one kill to his name. The other ones get irradiated and or wrecked by this Wraith, who happens to have three kills, which is not too shabby. And yeah, Southern Base is taken pretty happily here by last. Really nothing bothering it and nothing defending it either. So some links do manage to sneak on in. It would be bad. I'm just going to say that. Numatized Carapace coming on in a little bit late too. Melee attack level one. Getting started, the Carapace upgrade was first, and this attempt at a fifth base for last does get shut down by a handful of Zerglings. Lurkers burrowing on at the six, six o'clock position. This is what I like to see from Larva. He's starting to make a comeback in this game, y'all. Last maybe got a little bit too greedy. Skimping a little bit on static defense here, losing a couple SCVs there, and the Vultures not generally good against Lurkers, but when you outnumber them 16 to one, it's gonna be okay. You're gonna just do just fine. Thanks, a little bio ball, dealing with the naughty, naughty lings that forced to cancel on that fifth. And Larva's taking a fifth base of his own at the 12 o'clock position, double expanding to the three o'clock position two for a sixth. So if you can hold this, and I'm not sure that he can, these vultures, if they just snuck down there, they'd probably force to cancel on it when all is said and done. But Defilers, haven't really seen them come into play. They've been available for what I feel like five or six minutes, but not doing a whole lot. Working on the upgrade for them to increase their max energy. Dark Swarm comes up for the first time today. Spider Mines all over the place. Just getting tossed up everywhere. But dragging, dragging Spider Mines into Vultures is one of the ways to get rid of Vultures. So not bad. And hanging out in the Dark Swarm for reasons unknown, Mr. Last. Ooh. I think he got hit by his own Spider Mine right there. He did. He's going to try to dart on in. Tanks are moving out. Oh, this is absolutely a mech transition. Without question. Plus two attack for the mech is here. Working on vehicle plating. Working on Caron boosters because he knows the Guardians are a thing. And having Caron boosters is nice. Yeah, army trying to move on down. It's not much of an army and they're being intercepted by a larger portion of the army from Larva. Nice Dark Swarm. Nice Lurker positioning. And that Vulture dies as a result. I mean, you might honestly just want to unburrow and get on in here. But some Lings cruising on down. They do have adrenal glands, because they are chomping fast at these vultures without question. Spider mines wiping out individuals all the time here. That base is being held to another base has been set up by last on the right side. I don't know that Larva can shut it down. Once again, six o'clock position for last is utterly undefended. I guess maybe it counts on the fact that vultures are fast and they can get here quickly, but man. There's just nothing permanently here to keep these Lingren buys from happening at all. You know, don't you want to do that? Don't you want to keep them from happening at all? Seems like you probably would. Another base done for Larva. So he's suddenly at uh, eight bases? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. He certainly is at eight bases somehow, some way. So he's taken the whole top section of the map effectively. The bottom section of the map belongs to last, so this is a uh, this is an amazing, amazing macro-style game. I'm really enjoying what we're looking at right here. 75 to 66 workers. I mean, sure, well, 67 now, and the drop play. Okay, this is the stuff. This is what we've seen work in the past. Is the drop play? Vulture is sneaking up to the 12 o'clock position, causing some major problems for the drones up there. Wraith handling the dropper speedy lords. Drones getting massacred up north. Worker count dropping by about three or four there for Larva. So nothing incredibly life-changing. A Devourer is here. I haven't seen Devourers in Carbot all that much. We have seen it in the weekly streams, though. If you ever watch the weekly streams, I think we've seen every Zerg unit possible in those, which is a lot of fun. Three Sunkins handling the Vultures pretty effectively. I mean, sure, you can't necessarily save all of the drones, but killing Vultures is still a pretty good thing. Heading up the left side now. What are we at? 178 to 131 supply. This overall army discrepancy is just hugely in favor of last. I really don't know what Larva is going to be able to do to beat this. Larva is so patiently just taking the whole southern section of the map for his own. 
These side bases are the ones that make the difference when all is said and done. Guess who's got ultras? Hey, Larva has ultras. You know what's good against ultras? Spider mines and tanks. Like, really, really good against ultras. Spider mines and tanks. See this guy die? Yeah, he did. Okay. Uh, not good. I don't know. Running ultras in here is not a fantastic job against somebody who is as good and methodical as last is. We've seen Larva take down lesser Terran players doing this. Can't remember who it was, but he just effectively threw Lings and Ultras at the Terran player all the time until he won. It wasn't even particularly well micro. There wasn't a lot of Dark Swarm. He just went for it. So here comes Larva. Not enough. There's just not enough here. Last is ready. He's got a Radiate. He's got his tanks with the plus two attack. Great. Uh, decent plague on all the science vessels here, though. They've got the strawberry jelly on them. I'm really surprised this base has been allowed to live. I feel like Lass has been in a position to wipe it out for about five minutes now. Just has chosen not to. Maybe he is now. So Dark Swarm up, but just to radiate all three of those things. Plague some of that bio, or some of those tanks before you die, Defiler. And then this base is done. That's it. Yeah, Irradiate taking care of those lurkers. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Sunken calling, getting taken down. There's a starport scouting up to the north here. Just getting some good information about what comes out of that hatch. This game, though. Science vessels wiped out by Scourge when I wasn't paying attention. Catching the very tail end of that. Ling's just running free through this minefield. <laughs> Tank has five kills and can't hit the hatchery for some reason. I thought the range of tanks was better than that. Yeah, this base is toast. This base is toast. One, 276. All right, so Larva has managed to catch up an overall supply here. He's actually up in worker supply too, which is dead impressive considering where he was for most of this match. But how does he handle the mech? The lake mech. Oh, he's going for drops, which is cool. Dropping an ultralisk down here, dropping a couple lings down here too, and this base is in a lot of trouble, and the army comes back to respond to it. This Ultralisk accomplishing almost nothing. There we go. Holding off some Vultures so the Lings can chew up these SCVs. All right. This is something the Larvin needed to do. Tacking on in here. Dropping on in here with Ultras again on the left side. Kind of liking it. The Goliaths are really no match for this Ultralisk by any stretch. These tanks definitely are. But Ultras just trying to get inside the main base. Their pathing is stupid. As you can see, and they can't get up this ramp because Brood War pathing is really bad compared to pathing today. Really don't agree with the idea of these Ultras trying to get up this ramp, you guys. I don't like it. There are four tanks. More dropping happening. Scourge trying to do some stuff here, too. Overlords just sitting directly underneath or over missile turrets and getting wiped out. So, hmm. Last is at 68 workers. He did, again, wipe out this hatchery, which is good. Yeah, man, I think Larva has the right idea. You really just can't engage these tanks from the ground or this stuff happens. All right. Spider might help take out that tank. That's good. More dropping here at the front, keeping Last at home so Last doesn't push across the map and kill him. Does it work in the long run? is the question, and I'm not entirely sure I know the answer to that. Irradiating the Ultras doesn't kill them, but it does squish them up. Bruise them quite a bit, so the tanks can finish them off a little bit more easily. More Dropper Lords coming on in to this third base of last. And there's just enough army here where I don't think dropping here is the best idea. But more Lings and Ultras are coming on in. This might actually be Last's... Wow! Last just lost all of those tanks. That was a huge swing! In this game, and for the first time, it's a 161 to 146 overall supply advantage for last, or for Larva, rather. The Ultras are chewing through the 6 o'clock base. The 3 o'clock base isn't happy either. This Ultralisk happily has 10 kills to his name. An army swinging on the right side. Dealing with the last vestiges of defense of the bio for last. He does manage to hang on to it. But losing two bases is not something Last can abide, I don't think. Morlings and Ultras being produced all the time. If he can actually take down this main, I don't know that the outlying bases really matter all that much. This is where the production lives. This is where the factories are. There's a little bit of production on the right side. 
But I guess it's either way. All right, either uh, Larva can take down these bases on the bottom right-hand corner or go for the main and try to win there. But either way, if he can take either of that, those down, he's going to win. Which I did not think was possible about five minutes ago, but he's really turned the tables in this game. Expanding to the 9 o'clock position. I'm not surprised he's not going after the third right now. He's got quite a bit of resources to do so. Again, Larva style. Not a lot of Dark Swarm. When he gets into it, when he gets going, all of his APM is just focused on producing units and sending them across the map as fast as possible. Which, I don't know, it's not going to win you GSL, but it is a heck of a fun style to watch. And sometimes really effective. Look at the Science Vessel down. He's trying to get the Science Vessel count down to a minimum. Here's a couple over here you might be able to get too if you just cruise on over. Trying to find them. They are hid safely back in this corner though. And Hatched comes up. He's taking the 3 o'clock here, too. My goodness. My goodness. Is Larva going to do this? Seven queens. Oh, no. It's the queen curse. Any Zerg that has tried to go queens against Mech, try to spawn broodlings on those tanks, has ended up losing the match. However, I think Larva might have done enough damage overall. And he's in a position to win right now where maybe this is just the, the killing blow. This is the coup d'etat. Wait. It's not the word. Killing blow. What's the mm, colloquial translation for killing blow in French? Because coup d'etat is removal of the head. It's a beheading. It also works like if you're overthrowing a government. Maybe coup d'etat works. Alright, man. We're coming on in. That is a lot of tanks. These lings are accomplishing approximately nothing. Here. Although maybe getting inside that mineral line is not bad. Okay, officially it is not bad. Okay, so a lot of SCB is going down here for last. He is down to sub 50 workers right now. Big drop coming into the 6 o'clock. Dark Swarm is being used incredibly effective here, irradiating a couple of these overlords. But that means the Ultras aren't getting irradiated. That is so much Dark Swarm right now oh my gosh ultra is getting destroyed but this base is not happy at all this base is not happy at all another huge army coming in larva has completely turned the tide and that is your good game last taps out and larva is your winner in 27 minutes and 34 seconds holy crap that was an amazing game this might get an epic tag. This is the first time a Zerg has ever gone Queens against the Mecking Terran and won. Okay, so no Spawn Broodlings were used, but I don't know. I'm not sure this counts, but hit that like button if you enjoyed this game. All right, so, hmm. Larva Tactics, you guys. Larva Tactics. I don't know what else to say. I mean, if you click this, you're expecting this, right? You're expecting Ling Ultra production in insane numbers. Just pushes across the map, wiping out bases, picking off SCVs, winning engagements from time to time, and then the Dark Swarm coming in for just the finishing blow. 177 to 130 supply. Like, this base is not happening anymore. This base is not happening anymore. He has effectively one mining base right now. I guess we can count that one if we want, but you need more gas than this for the tank count that he needed. And then he'd taken these two bases, which, you know, last was aware of, and he's still hanging on to all of this. Yeah, man. This is just Larva dealing with some early setbacks and then getting into full Larva mode and winning it. This is getting an epic tag. That was a great game. That was really good. I did not expect... I really didn't expect Larva to win that. Again, last, one of the best Terran players on Earth right now. All right, man. 893 Zerg units produced. Ended up losing... 650 of them, but still had a whole bunch remaining. That's generally how that works. Structures raised. Again, not fair when there's Zerg involved. And overall, way more gas mined, way more minerals mined, and a total of about 12,000 more resources spent for Larva. That's a lot of Lings, a lot of Ultras, and Defilers, man. Got that Adrenal Gland up. Got the Defiler tech on in. Got the Ultras rocking. Never really attacked into a position he wasn't comfortable with. And got the win. Fantastic. What a fantastic game from Larva. I assume, I mean, a lot of people do love this dude, and I understand that. I like his style, but this might be the most impressive one I've seen of his. 
on the channel. Honestly, I think it is. So, fantastic. Wonderful, wonderful game from Larva. Gets the win against a Mecking Terran, no less. And drops, man. Let's just let's hit that again. Drops, drops, drops. You need to drop on a Mecking Terran. You can't engage them over the ground over and over again, or you're just going to lose. Hoorah. All right. Good stuff. That's going to be it for me today. This has been Falcon Paladin coming at you with yet another edition of StarCraft Brood War Remastered. Go ahead and hit that like button. Hit that subscribe if you like what you saw and what you heard today. You can also catch me on Twitter, Facebook, Patreon, and Twitch, all at slash Falcon Paladin. And until next time, as always, thank you so much for watching, and you take care of yourself.